All right, welcome to another episode. Today we are in the sunny UK with John from Electric Classic Cars visiting and showing us this one-of-a-kind Jensen Interceptor which has lost his uh, V8 power for uh, tons of electrons. So John, tell us a bit more about this fantastic project. Uh, so when this car came to us, well going back, the, the, the customer had bought this car, I don't know, it's 10 or over 10 years ago. Wow, okay. Um, he bought it to do a drive, he wanted an interesting car to drive between Bristol and, and, and London. Um, he bought it, had it restored, had the engine refurbished, but it, it just wasn't reliable enough for him. Um, too, too many problems that he'd had with that journey, so he came to us to say, what can we do with it? Uh, he wanted to be able to do that journey without having to stop for a charge, but with rapid charging so that if he did, he wasn't there very long. Okay. So drive uh, it like a modern uh, electric car, Drive it much. like a modern yeah. electric car, but with a little bit of the class of the you know, the 1970s. 70s, yeah. The drive is about, say, two to three hours, about 200 miles. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of the range. So if he leaves fully charged from home, maybe... maybe. I think actually the, 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 the full distance is about 170 miles Okay. Um, from, from door to door for him, which he's done now as, a, as electric. Okay. Um, and he's achieved that, so he was very happy that we achieved. We, we, we obviously, when we do these, we can't promise. Yeah. We didn't know what battery pack we would be able to fit in this. Um, there's a, there was a large 7.2 litre V8 that came out, the, the, the Chrysler big block. So that gave us plenty of weight. I mean, it was a huge amount of weight that we took out of this. Yeah. But we've obviously got to fit in a battery pack that it wasn't designed for. We've got to get the weight balance nice. So we settled on a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. We have had to sacrifice a little bit of the boot space because we couldn't get it any lower. Yeah. Um, but he's still able, to get his golf clubs in, which happy keeps days. him happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, it does about 180 to 200 mile range, depending on driving in conditions. Um, it's got the CCS rapid charging, so if he is on longer journeys, yep. you know, he can do a 20 to 80% charge in, yeah, around half an hour, maybe. Happy days. Um, Let's go through the components you've used. So as you said, you removed the V8, the gearbox, and also the rear axle, but we can talk about this in a minute. But what batteries or modules were you using when designing your battery packs, and also what motor are you using? Well, so, so the motor is a, a Tesla Large. We, we, nice. Because this is a front engine rear wheel drive, this is a, a, an issue with, with our Porsches and other cars that you know we've done before, the, the Ferraris, they're rear or mid engine. Um, and it's a nice easy swap for that engine gearbox out, the motor in to drive those mm -hmm. rear wheels. We've got a solid rear axle on this and, um, and diff that we had to drive. So we looked at various options. There's modified Tesla motors through a gearbox, to drive that rear diff. We tried those, they were too noisy uh, and a bit of backlash. They weren't good enough for what we needed for this. So we had to rethink that rear end. We built a, a, a custom independent rear suspension to mount that Tesla motor. Fantastic. Um, right. uh, and that means it's got modern rear suspension now. So the handling, even with a better weight balance, yeah. is unbelievable compared to what it was. So you said you removed quite a lot of weight. Uh, do you know if the car is roughly about where it was weight-wise? I, I, it, it, it is roughly where it was. I think it's about weight neutral, maybe slightly lighter. Okay, wow, excellent. So what else comes into the picture when redesigning you know, the rear suspension and, and, and axle, uh, say, brakes? Was this already a four-disc brake car? Uh, yeah, so brake-wise, brake, brake -wise, it was already pretty good. Okay. Um, we didn't have to, no drum brakes to, to, to replace on that. Um, but that, yeah, the, the main difference is that um, the rear suspension being so much better than the original Leaf suspension. Okay. Uh, and everything, all of that bolts onto all of the original mounts as Fantastic, well. Fantastic, yeah. Uh, going back to the Tesla drivetrain, did you tune it down or is, does it send full power? Uh, this is set on sensible power. It's, a, it's more of a Tourer a rather GT, than a, it's yeah. a GT, not a sports car. So whilst it's got a better performance in terms of acceleration than its original, it's, it's not gonna light up the, the wheels, <laughs> um, but it cruises nice and easily and really super smooth. Okay. So perfect for this for this car, gentleman's weekend tourer. <laughs> Do you know where the owner uh, text is? Uh, obviously he's going back and forth between Bristol and London, but has he taken this say on a continental trip uh, going across France uh, no, and the Switzerland? Moment, I think those, the, those, the longest trips uh, are to, to London. Okay, all right. All right, John, now let's see what it has under the bonnet. Okay. So something interesting on the Jensen is the front is a one piece bodywork. There is no seam because this may not be metal. Uh, it sounds that metal. I think it is. So that, that's a lot of bodywork yeah. to get uh, rid of all the seams. All right, not a piece de resistance. Uh, the larger part of the uh, 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, the second one being in the boot. We'll just turn on the track. So, 
what, bat, what modules are you using? So, uh, yeah, Felton will know these modules well. They, they supplied it with these modules, so they're a new uh, module, Calb. Uh, I forget the exact configuration, but they are, I think there's 24 of them in series okay. um, to give a, a, a 60 kilowatt hour uh, battery pack. We've got, I don't know if you noticed at the front, obviously we've got the um, the radiator, so we've got battery and motor cooling. Okay. Um, obviously that's a, an absolute requirement um, just for the general safety of the car, but also for the CCS rapid charging, mm -hmm. which in this case was also supplied by Felton, so uh, up to 70 kilowatt CCS. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, with their charge controller as well. Uh, and it's split approximately, uh, I think it's about 70% of them in the front and about 30% in, in the rear. Uh, because we've got the motor in the rear as well with that uh, extra weight of the batteries, that gives us a really nice weight balance on this car. Excellent. Because um, uh, they, they were very, very heavy in the front with that huge 7.2 litre V8 that was so in So these handles better than the original one? Much ever better. Did. Okay, Much perfect. Better. Uh, what about the cooling system? Uh, cooling, custom cooling system. So the, these are rads that we have made ourselves. Um, uh, by one of our specialist suppliers to our specification. Custom header tanks here. Cooling system runs through chill plates which lie between the, um, the, the batteries. The modules, yeah. Uh, between the modules. So ba batteries are, are, are like humans, they like to stay between about 16 to 25 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> anything above and they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. You know, they like us, happy. they start complaining yeah, yeah. and anything yeah. below they, they, uh, they don't perform as well. Um, they don't stop performing but uh, at lower temperatures they are not as efficient which yeah. is why your range will drop in the winter. Uh, what about the braking system? Any upgrades in the cell? Uh, yeah. No, the only thing that we've done on the brakes is obviously have um, uh, an electric pump for the servo um, and that's the same with the power steering. We've got an electric power steering pump in now um, because again the compression for that came from the original engine okay. which is now gone. Everything else is yeah as it, as it was. There was, apart from the uh, changing that rear axle out to independent rear suspension, um, which is a, something that uh, Jensen owners have been doing on these cars for a while. Okay. That's, that's something that's been available uh, as standard. Uh, although the standard one did not fit our purposes, which is why we had to build a custom one. Um, uh, everything else is as it was. Perfect. We had, let's didn't have, a have look to do inside. But let's start with uh, the the back, where the second uh, battery pack is. Yeah, not much to see in that bit. Well, that's the whole point. You want to make the battery invin invisible, which it is. So there's still, still room for cables, as you say, yep. a golf uh, bag. Golf bag will yeah. sit in there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the battery pack is hidden under there, right. but hidden nicely. It doesn't look out of place. It could and almost be. This is where oh, yeah. you'll charge. All right. And again, type two CCS. CCS. Yeah. So let's check out the interior, which uh, to me looks pretty much standard. Obviously, there's no gear shifter. That's the thing missing. Yeah. Um, the original gear shift has gone. We've put in this plate. We tried to keep it in keeping as possible. Yeah. Obviously, um, dials, all the dials in the same place. They look and feel the same, but we've changed the um, information to give the correct information. So we've got battery percentage level. We've got battery temperature, motor temperature. We've got the 12 volt battery voltage as well. Yeah. Keep an eye on that. And instead of the rev counter, we've got um, the amps, which gives you your power, both for um, when you're in drive mode and also regen mode. So you can see how much is going back into the batteries. And the rest of the interior is in fantastic condition. Was it ever restored? This was restored yeah. before it came to us, yeah. yeah. So we, I don't know. I think this is um, uh, all, all original colors, um, but it was obviously restored. So it's in, in, in very good condition, no good condition. yeah. I think the, the next step for us is to take this for a spin. One other thing is we took out the um, handbrake and put in a, an electric parking brake. Okay. Um, so again, a nice little add to this car. I think it's nicely in, fits with the, uh, the the luxury of this car. Yeah. Which it and probably again, brings it to modern standards. And yes. imagine the original um, parking brake would have been on the gearbox or probably a drum on the gearbox. Yeah, I'm not sure on this one. That's where my knowledge of Jensen's falls down. Okay, yeah. no problem. Uh, one thing to notice, if you want to sit in the back, you better get rid of your legs first because there's not much room. I think that is something to do with a, um, a workaround in the 70s uh, uh, for tax purposes, mm -hmm. so that uh, uh, gentlemen could get their nice fancy car in a different tax bracket um, because it technically had rear seats, seats so yeah. it wasn't a sports car. <laughs> um, these are not particularly practical. In fact, I've found that the, even the, the Porsche 911, which is a much smaller car, has more <laughs> leg space in the rear than a Jensen does. That's funny. 
All right, so we, we, we didn't mention that this was the first uh, interceptor you've done. Is there a market for doing more? Uh, do, do you know if anyone has asked to do another one? Uh, I've had a number, of, uh, a few inquiries over the years for Jensen's, um, but uh, this is the only one that we've done. It's the only one I'm aware of that has been converted so far. I okay. could be wrong, but I think it's the only one in existence. So um, I'm, I, I, I believe that there will be somebody out there at some point that says, can you do mine as well? It's had, we, we, we've had it at the, at the show recently at um, the Goodwood um, Revival, um, and it got a lot of interest. Uh, we even had the uh, president of the Jensen Owners Club there, very excited, very interested in it, and they wanted to do a little write up themselves. Excellent. So um, I'm sure it, it will. We, we will do another. <laughs> All right. Do you have a, a budget range for a conversion like this? Obviously, it's a one-off. So it takes a lot of engineering. This this was uh, yeah very very one-off. It took a lot of hours to do. Um, it, it, it's north of one hundred and sixty thousand, okay. including the VAT. Okay. Um, and that that's where you're going to be at with any one-offs. And any yeah. one-offs yeah. the, the, the custom, especially of car of this size with um, with what goes into it. How long does it take you guys to custom design a one-off system? Uh, if we were just focusing on that one, on that one car, probably around 12 to 15 months. Um, but obviously, we're working on numerous cars at the same time, so this did take uh, uh, quite a bit longer. Than okay. That. All right. Uh, I think it was about 18 months, two years. Okay. Which, in the grand scheme of things, being again a one-off, is not crazy. No, okay. uh, it's it's sort of similar to um, a full restoration mm -hmm. job. They can take obviously longer than that, um, but I think the average is probably around eighteen months to two years. Yeah, but no, it's future proof. This can be enjoyed for many years to come, and again, better handling, more power, uh, and just a smoother ride also. So yep, yeah, that's what the client was looking for, and and I think um, I'm going to be driving it back to the client today. Um, it's a beautiful thing to drive, um, and yeah, such a pleasurable place to be when you are cruising <laughs> along. Uh, speaking of cruising, I think we should take this uh, for a quick spin and uh, let you deliver it to the happy customer. All right. So you just reversed and I was going to ask you if you have uh, park distance controls or any cameras, but you don't need anything because you have such a nice visibility with the large windows. It's perfect. Yeah, there's certainly more um, visibility than my modern car which relies on reversing cameras and huge mirrors. And uh, I won't mention any brand, but some cars nowadays come with no glass whatsoever in the back, which means you have a camera and a screen in your rear view mirror, which is actually an LCD screen. Uh, funny how things have evolved. <laughs> for, for a 1970s car, this actually the visibility that we have is, is very good. Um, I've, obviously, I get to drive quite a few cars from the 50s, 60s and 70s, and they're not all to this standard. Yeah. So do you have, uh, with a Tesla driving it, do you use a traction control or any other option? We do not have the, um, the, the traction control unit on this uh, in this build. We have used it for others, uh, where we were more set to power, like the Ferrari Testarossa. Um, but we, where we've got the power set on this unit, I'm just stopping for it. Speaking of unit. So we've, we've just got the, the, the power set to suit this car. Um, we also swapped out the uh, open differential in the uh, Tesla unit for uh, an ATB limited slip differential. All right. One thing we haven't mentioned is this originally had an AC system. Yes. So uh, how do you solve uh, this using the electric system? So we just had to uh, swap out the original controller um, and condenser for a 400 volt electric version which we get from a, a very trusted supplier um, uh, down on the south coast. Yeah, so uh, that functions even better than original. Right. Um, same, with, same with the heat, the heater as well. All right, John, so this is going back to its owner, but what's next for you? What's next for electric classic cars for 2026? Well, we've always got a, um, a, a full workshop um, with lots of interesting projects. We're obviously going to be continuing um, our mainstay, which is the uh, Defenders and the Porsche 911s. Um, obviously, we have our kits from those, so we're which gonna you be, ship around the globe. We yeah. ship around the world, so uh, we supply to uh, companies in Canada, in the USA, um, Australia, um, uh, South Africa. Um, 
especially for the defenders. They're very popular. Um, uh, and we continue to do our bespokes, our one-offs. So we've got uh, finishing off some uh, interesting projects at the end of this year, the, um, the Bellwing replica um, that we've got. We've got the Porsche 928. Um, uh, we've got a couple of uh, Porsche 928s in. Um, so yeah, lots of interesting projects coming up for 2026. All right. And uh, I tell you that the experience that horse had passing us was much better than the original engine because that would have been <laughs> roaring at it. And also plenty of smoke behind us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, guys, if you like what you saw today, let us know in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up. And also, if you want to visit uh, ECC, go on electricclassiccars.com. And guys, we'll see you in the next one.